fellas, this year on the local footy show, we're paying tribute to the golden voices of footy, the legendary commentators that we all remember. This week, we salute Drew Morfitt. For just on 50 years, the dulcet tones of Drew Morford have informed and entertained generations of Australian sports fans. Whether on the ABC or on Channel 7, Drew's cultured commentary oozed class and the highlights were countless. Grand finals are a highlight. Um, one of my football highlights was the first ever draw, Anzac Day, Essendon Collingwood and they played a draw in 1995, phenomenal game of football, uh, test cricket, many, many highlights, um, did a tour to South Africa, Australia lost in two and a, two and a third days, we got bowled out for 47 in, in our second innings, then we bowled South Africa out for 98 and we were still in the game but uh, um, that was sort of a low light and a highlight. Fancy being there to see Australia get knocked over for 47. Um, many highlights. Olympic Games are some of my favourite memories because when you're representing Australia and you're over there in a competition against, say, 150 countries or whatever, and if Australia can happen, happen to snare a gold medal, um, to me they're, they're the all-time highlights. <laughs> The ABC's weekly VFL football program, The Winners, proved a real winner for Drew. A rental crowd at VFL Park of 73,380 people uh, watch the game. Well, the winners, well, it was a highlight that lasted for 10 years. So, so uh, we used to do it on a Saturday night, and at various times it went uh, live to air on a Saturday night, and at other times, a bit later on, it was recorded and went to air on Sunday at 5 o'clock. So we used to go back to back with Molly Meldrum and Countdown. And fancy being back to back with Molly Meldrum. That's a thing that's not even worth thinking about. Um, but the show lasted for 10 years. It was really popular, mostly outside of Victoria, because they had Channel 7 and Lou Richards and Peter Landy and all that. But it was massive in Perth, because they had no other uh, source of the VFL it was at the time. And half the teams were West Australians, and they lapped it up. They absolutely loved it. So yeah, that was a highlight. As befits a man who has called VFL and AFL footy, test cricket, four Olympic Games, tennis, basketball, and even a British golf open, Drew is a true professional who never shows any bias. Or does he? Well, somebody once told me that if you're gonna be biased calling the footy, and you're on one side rather than the other, you're gonna upset half the audience in the first five minutes. So that uh, if, you, if you're working on 49% or 50% of the audience hating you after five minutes, just leave it alone. Um, the umpires are always right. Um, uh, no team's ever getting the, you know, the rough end of the pineapple, that sort of thing. So you're unbiased when you're doing the football. But when you're doing the Olympics and it's Australia on the big world stage, I reckon you're allowed to be biased. Um, I also reckon you're allowed to be biased doing test cricket, especially when the Aussies are playing the Poms, because we love stitching up the Poms, and uh, a couple of summers ago when we won 5 nil, oh, there was nothing better. And Drew has worked alongside many sporting legends. Kerry O'Keefe gave me many laughs uh, in the commentary box at the cricket. Um, gee, I've done a British Open with Jack Newton, um, Olympic cycling with Phil Anderson. Uh, they were all great moments. Um, some of the football blokes have sat alongside. Kevin Bartlett, Lee Matthews, Ron Barassi, Mike Fitzpatrick, well before he became the chairman of the commission. Um, he was an ABC commentator. Um, how lucky am I? I mean, never, never had a kick, never took a mark, never made a run, never took a wicket, and I've been lucky enough to rub shoulders with all these people. It's fantastic. Drew's passion for calling sport began at an early age. I can remember when I was a kid pushing marbles around the floor and having make-up games and talking into a glass to hear my voice back. That was, that was my microphone when I was, I don't know, seven, eight years old. Talking the whole time, mark, 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 and playing games with marbles. And then I would throw a tennis ball against the wall and hit it. I was a left arm bowler and a right arm bat, so I could throw it like that and just 
hour after hour after hour. And I was Norm O'Neill and I was giving it to Freddie Truman and I was commentating the whole time. Um, you know, I honed my skills as a commentator before I even turned a teenager. But the media landscape has changed a lot in half a century. It has changed a hell of a lot. I mean, uh, the digital age has hit us and you can watch uh, four different matches from Wimbledon on the one night. Whereas in the old days, if, if you got Wimbledon on one channel, uh, you got one feed. Um, so it is fantastic. And social media, I mean, the Twitterverse and all that sort of stuff, just amazing. You can get a news story sitting at home on the couch while you're watching TV. Um, gee, I can remember when I was sort of doing sport news on the ABC, you didn't know when a coach was going to get sacked or had been sacked or anything like that. So you had to keep your wits about you and keep your nose to the ground. Nowadays, the news comes out and everybody knows that within two minutes they're all over it. After 50 years in the mainstream sporting media, Drew has had few opportunities until now to savour the delights of local footy. No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, gee, um, Sorrento one week, Cooer up the next week. And these are things that I've never done before because every Saturday I was at an AFL game. And so you do lose touch a little bit with the grassroots of football. And football relies on the grassroots because if these country leagues and, and suburban leagues aren't coming up with players, uh, the talent pool for the AFL is thin. Already it's thinner than it used to be because there's 18 teams. In my day there were 12. So the talent pool is thinner than it used to be. But unless we keep encouraging local leagues, Where's the talent going to come from? And Drew likes what he sees at local level. Actually, it's been a real eye-opener today uh, to see the number of people here. I just spoke at the President's lunch. 170 people for lunch. Gee, uh, you know, there'd be a few league teams would be struggling to get that. So the atmosphere in the President's lunch was great. And like many of his contemporaries at Sorrento last Saturday, Drew laments the direction our great game has taken. Footy used to be better when 18 pairs of blokes played around the ground, rather than flooding back 36 blokes in one third of the ground, possession changes, the 36 all move up to the other end of the ground. But gee, it was beautiful when they kicked 65 metre drop punts, blokes took marks, stand on other fellows' ears. I loved it. Well, gents, the news coming through last week, of course, about the uh, Nepean and uh, Peninsula League presidents uh, putting in a vote of no confidence in the uh, MPNFL board down